Hey, non-gaming unicorn, do you approve of this? Thanks, Non Gaming Unicorn. Today I'm going to be looking at some of the component upgrades I did for Fury of Dracula, 3rd edition. Um, some of these, I, when I was playing the 2nd edition, I kind of made some of the same, uh, some of the same um, component upgrades. And, uh, but uh, this, is, uh, this is for the 3rd edition. The first thing I did was sleeve the cards because of my OCD issues. Uh, for the most part, I used, uh, you know, the Fantasy Flight um, card sleeves that were uh, clear on both sides. However, for the um, uh, for the for the Dracula fighting cards, I I put a different uh, whimsical. I used a different whimsical sleeve for those. You know, with that kind of a skull. Um, and then for the um, for the encounter cards, I used uh, um, I used a, I used another skull thing. So it's, a, it's a little more whimsical. You can kind of tell the tell what kind of cards uh, you have uh, right away, you know, and the, and they're and they're sleeved with the uh, dry, you know with the uh, fight cards and the um, you know these these are I, I was going to like uh, put a you know different color. Uh, different printed card for card sleeve for some of the um, the uh, hunters uh, fight cards, and then I realized that you know you you have to be able to um, you know they have to be able to meld in with the other with the other cards. And I've also stored the cards in uh, deck boxes, and I made them more whimsical by putting um, you know by decorating them with uh, scenes from the uh, you know from the ninth from the classic 1930s Dracula with Bela Lugosi. The uh, remake, uh, well not really the remake, but the version, uh, the Francis Ford Coppola version. And and I used some artwork uh, from the game. To, you know, I always like this picture of Mina punching out Dracula. All right, and also I, um, to store the counters in, I, um, I made a, here's a, um, uh, here's the, a scene from the Francis Ford Coppola movie, and um, and you know this is where I stored. Whoops, this is where I stored the tokens. And let's get this open. You know, I just yeah, you know, this is where the tokens are stored. All right, I replaced the uh, flat tokens uh, f to mark influence and the um, the time of day. Um, the time of day Randall and uh, I used a uh, leading edge game Dracula figure as well as a uh, Reaper bones uh, bats uh, coming out of the grave and you know I painted it up it, it's uh, it's um, you know it's a little more um, a little more uh, graphic uh, graphic intense than just a flat counter as as for the miniatures themselves, the miniatures that came that come with the game are pretty neat. Um, they're my the, the fault, and I and I painted them, and I'm probably going to sell them on eBay. But uh, I think that they were kind of small. So what I did was I found a set of uh, miniatures from Westwind Games, and it's called uh, it, it's a Van Helsing faction. They they had some more figures, but these were the ones that were a little more. Uh, conducive to the game. Okay, so we have uh, Van Helsing, uh, Good Old Mina, um, Good Alming, and the Doctor. And what I also did, I, I painted them, of course. And then what I also did was on the bottom, I put their, I put their name. I, I used the picture from the book or from the uh, game uh, character card, and I put their name so people wouldn't forget who they are. And the picture matches up to the uh, to the pieces, the character cards. And then we have Draki himself, which is a Reaper, um, a Reaper a classic uh, vampire Dracula figure. It, it's more in line with Bela Lugosi. Um, now, um, so you know, I, I painted him, um, and it, it's it's I, I, I'm. To tell you the truth, I'm really, I'm really um, happy with the way the figures came out. Too bad the lining's not too good, but uh, there you go. Oh, and uh, the Mina figure is a uh, actually a Reaper uh, Victorian lady. 
Here are the character cards themselves, and uh, what I did, I, instead of laminating them, I was kind of lazy and just put them in um, in plastic sleeve, three by five plastic sleeves. There, you know, there's a little more room, uh, a little more room for the card, but I just kind of didn't feel like uh, just didn't feel like laminating them. Uh, now, what I also did was I replaced the uh, hit point markers with dice, and you know, we, we have. Uh, Okay, Mina uh, starts out with uh, nine hit points. Uh, you just put the top of the dice on there. I, I found this out from um, when I played in an Arkham Horror game. Um, the guy that was doing it uh, used dice instead of um, instead of the markers, and it just kind of cleans up the table a little bit. Um, you know, and then when when you take hit points, you just you just mark it down. And I have a big twenty big twenty sided one for uh, Draki, so everybody knows um, knows what his hit points are. As far as the screen goes, I don't really have a, uh, a screen um, so that uh, the players can't, you know, see where I'm looking. Or as the non-gaming unicorn says, they, they can't see my beady eyes going over the map board. What I did was I got a, um, I got a faux wooden book from uh, the Hobby Lobby. And I, um, it, has a, it has a map on there, which is appropriate. And then I put some, uh, I put some glitter uh, hot pot, uh, Glitter uh, Mod Podge on it uh, as a tribute to the Twilight vampires that sparkle. Real vampires don't sparkle. And then I put um, two eyes on there. You know that that's Draki uh, watching you. And then what I did, so the players can't see what I'm doing, is I put a map on the inside. See this this part flips up like that. And they can't see what I'm doing. I have a map in here, and then I have these uh, magnetized. Um, I have these magnetized. Um, Magnetized little markers and there's there's a magnet under there's a magnet underneath the map and then I can kind of you know keep track and then I, I can kind of see where I am without having to look at the map and where I've been so when the players say oh uh, has Dracula been here I can say yes or no um, without actually looking on the board or looking through the uh, looking through the cards uh, that are uh, that are on the tableau uh, map board okay so um, these are the um, these are the uh, upgrades I did for a Fury of Dracula third edition. One thing that I ha that I well I don't have it yet. That's why I didn't show it. Was uh, there's a group there, there's a, a nice uh, lady that makes dice bags. Um, her her she's on Etsy and uh, the, her company name is Ninth Stitch. I'll put a link below. And uh, they make dice bags. And I found some fabric uh, that has the Bella Lugosi. Um, in various pictures, I found some fabric that had that. So I had them. I I had her make a large bag to be able to put all you know to fit everything uh, in in the bag because this uh, this box doesn't um, you know my my screen doesn't quite fit in the box and then uh, you know this way you know I, I have everything all wrapped together and it's a, a dice bag for games. All right, so um, if you uh, if you like this video, give me a hearty thumbs up. Uh, Give some comments uh, down below. This uh, third edition game is freaking awesome. I mean, the uh, second edition was really good. I like uh, in third edition. I really like the way the combat is streamlined. Um, you know, the main elements are there. Uh, I I, I want to. I, I have. I bought a copy of first edition. I haven't really looked at it yet, but I, I'm. You know, maybe uh, maybe I'll do a review of that. Um, if you have any questions or, you know, basically if you have comments, put them down below. I think I picked up another viewer, so I'm up to around 29 or 30. Woohoo, we're going to take over the world. So give me a hearty thumbs up if you like the video. If you don't, shut up. Thanks for watching. Bye now.